Hi everyone, welcome to this new web series and episode of Jazzy Joe Meets India's Mix Masters. The web series where I talk to the leading top DJs in India. In every episode, we feature one leading Indian DJ and we ask him a few questions about his career, his life and his views about music and clubs in India. I hope you will all enjoy and support my humble effort in talking to India's Mix Masters. This time, I am talking with another one of India's greatest and popular disc jockeys. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy and proud to present one of India's popular Mix Masters and my dear friend Suketu Radia. Suketu Radia, popular known as DJ Suketu, is an Indian DJ, music producer and content creator. Since the release of his critically acclaimed tracks, Bin Tere Sanam, Pyar Zindagi and Wo La Me, DJ Suketu has been widely acclaimed as the number one Bollywood music DJ in India and is widely known for the most popular remixes of all time. His skills were honed by four times UK champion and two times world champion DJ Cutmaster Swift at the DMC headquarters in Burnham and he went on to win the DMC in 1999. He was recently seen on top-rated Indian television show Chalak de Khlaja with jury members like Remo D'Souza, Karan Johar and Madhuri Dixit on Colors, where he mixed live music for the contestant. He is the only Indian producer to have collaborated on mixes with Flo Rida and Sean Kingston. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the rock star who has been filling dance floors all over India and around the world. The mix master and my dear friend, DJ Suketu. Thank, Hi, you, thank Suketu. you very much, sir. How are you? How are you? How are things? Everything is going good. Touch with, with God's grace. Abhi tak, uh, no virus and family and friends are safe, including you. So that's good. Okay, okay. Good to see you wearing red, my favorite color. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank great, you. Great. Let's, let's start. Suketu, uh, tell me about... Uh, how you began? What what was your first experience uh, like uh, with DJing? How uh, what year was it? What club was it? Can you tell us about that? Okay, so uh, first thing is unlike uh, a lot of the other DJs, I was never a club DJ. I was a private party DJ first, and then got into clubs because after I took part in the DMC. But uh, my okay. first experience to actually knowing what a DJ is was when I was in college. I was in FYJC, and I think it was 1994 or three, 93, 94, okay. and that's the first time I actually saw DJ Hussein Sir perform in uh, at my college party. And I was just blown out of my mind. I was like, how is this person mixing the way he's talking on the mic, his body language, the music, the song, one after the other was just killing it. I mean, he was actually taking the students on a journey. And I said, I got to try my hands on something, you know, like this. And I should see if I can become a DJ. And one thing led to another. I started doing some college parties, some sweet 16s, some 18 parties, some 21st parties. And... One thing led to another, by the time I finished my graduation in TYBCOM, I had gotten into DJing pretty much full time doing private parties. I can totally relate to that. I can understand. I'm a big fan of DJ Jose too. Absolutely, um, uh, sure. Do you, uh, what about uh, clubs? Uh, do you remember a few of the clubs? Uh, so, of course, in the last 22 years of playing music, there have been a lot of nightclubs and a lot of places and a lot of good memories as well. But, yeah, one interesting fact is that though I started playing in 1995, 96, I did not enter a nightclub or play in a nightclub, enter a nightclub till 1999. And it was in 1998, actually, that I saw the DMC India finals happening in Mumbai, where the first time I even saw you perform. And it was Sunny Sarit, sir, and Clement, and Ivan, sir, and... Uh, uh, Lloyd, 
uh, Nasha and everybody performing together. And that's when my eyes actually opened that this is real DJing. This is what I need to do. This private party and playing summer of '69 when everybody requests it and all is one part of it and it's good fun. But this is what I need to get into. And that's when I actually then started training in turntablism with uh, Joe Azaredo in uh, Mumbai. And uh, he trained me, and I took my I took part in 1999 in the DMC Championships, and that was the first time in my life I entered a nightclub in the console. I have of course I had gone to nightclubs to party, but in 1999, so from 96 to 99, there was no thing, nothing with the nightclubs. And then after that, of course, you know, one thing led to another. Won the Mumbai round, did first runner up in India. And my first album came out, and since my first album came out, and actually post DMC, when people actually heard about DJ Sukhedu, there have been a lot of nightclubs. But I remember my first absolute nightclub where I did a proper solo performance, and it you know got the crowd there was in Chennai at a nightclub called Hell Freezes Over in the year 2000. That takes me. Your first album takes me to the big hit, the huge hit, Bin Tere Sanam. Can you tell us the story behind that? How did that come up? Because I remember once you met me, I think at the Delhi airport right. or or the Mumbai airport, and you yeah. told me, Jazzy, uh, it's a very simple remix. I don't know why yeah. it's so popular. So what <laughs> yeah. was the story behind that? <laughs> So funnily, the thing was that Bin Tere Sanam was supposed to be on my first and my album, my first album, which was 440 volts. But uh, yeah. apparently, it seems that when we produced the song, the song became. I mean, people loved it so much that they said that no, Pyaar Zindagi Hai is also fantastic. So let that be your first video track and let that release. And we will put Bin Tere Sanam either in your next album or we will release it as a single later. You know, in a separate album. And actually, that's what happened. So, for, and I, Pyaar Zindagi Hai. I actually, I think, spent close to six to seven days to get it right, the way it was sounding. And it was my first remix ever. So I wanted my first video track, which is going to be released, and I really wanted it to be perfect. That there could be no glitches at all. So it took me seven days. And Bin Tere Sanam was the last song we did for the album 440 Words, and it actually oh, really? took Hais and it took Haisen and me about seven hours or eight hours to produce and go. Like you know, we started off in the night and. And like you know, next day in the morning we had the song ready and we gave the demo to Times Music and they said this song is mind blowing. Mix and master it. We're not releasing it right now. We'll keep it for later. And I still don't get it. That was it the simplicity of the remix or was it the melody of the song Bin Tere Sanam or was it our reference track by Kaini Manog which was Can't Get You Out of My Head which was very popular at that time which we adapted into Bin Tere Sanam. I still don't know what it was that really worked. It was a combination of everything that actually made the song that bigger hit. I think it's what DJ Suketu. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. But uh, and, and okay, the image uh, right now is uh, that you're a Bollywood DJ. Yes. But but if I were to ask you your favorite genre, would it be Bollywood or some other one? So Bollywood has definitely been my favorite genre, and it always remain as my favorite genre. I have no regrets, or I have. Nothing to tell people, you know. When even somebody says that, oh, I play Bollywood because the money is there or the work is there, but I otherwise play house or I play this and that. I truly and definitely love Bollywood, and there is no denying that. And I feel that only if somebody loves what the genre that he or she is producing, okay, that's when that they can do justice to it and really do a good production. So definitely. But my second most favorite genre in the last, I think, maybe six to seven years or maybe eight years. Which I've been totally grooving on is Deep House. I've been absolutely loving it. It's just Good. fantastic. Uh, more than two decades. Is there a change that you have seen in the music that has come about? Uh, the charts, um, the crowd, what they are responding to, um, the remixes, the kind of music that you've had to change, the kind of remixes you've had to make. Uh, make. Yes. Uh, do you see any change in that? So yes, of course, there's a lot of change which has happened in the music, and the first, most, and the biggest change I see from the year 2000 to uh, maybe 2008, when I play parties that time, Bollywood was about 25 percent or 30 percent of the music. The balance was say 70 percent, 65 percent was uh, pop music, international music, commercial pop, and things like that. But uh, slowly, slowly, once remixes became popular and things became really big. I just saw the trend that now Bollywood has become about 80% of the music and 20% is given to everything else that is be by hip hop or uh you know uh, and when I say Bollywood I don't mean film music I mean Indian music desi music as you may call it yeah. this includes Punjabi indie pop 
Hollywood, everything together because Punjabi music has also become a very big part of today's music culture. So that's become 80% of the balance. 20% is English music, commercial pop and everything like that. So definitely that music changes happen. And yeah, I've seen the music uh, remixes also that have changed through the years. I think when we started off in the day, back in the day in 2000, 2002, producing remixes like Pali Sagu sir or Akbar Sami sir or Akil or Nasha or myself, anybody, we always went on the more melodic side of a remix and we sort of, you know, try to work around the song. But today I feel that the remixes have changed in the way that people are adapting a genre to put into a song. So in between, Big Room became a very big thing. All the sounds of Avicii and uh, Hardwell and uh, uh, Dimitri Vegas like Mike. So all the remixes came with that really big, those big synths and those white synths and everything like that, you know. So And then after that, suddenly people realized that uh, uh, hip hop had become a very popular genre. So a lot of mid-tempo started coming in. And right now also it's very, very popular. Like if you see most of the biggest songs which are there, which are running, they are all in the Despacito range and the remixes also which are coming out and the Bollywood tracks also coming out a lot in that range. So I think, yes, music uh, genres and type of remixes has changed a lot in the past uh, uh, 18, 15 to 18 years. This is a question that comes from my heart. As from DJ to DJ, what makes you get more happy, production or performance on a stage? Well, you know what I've been, I've, I've, I've always liked to embrace every part of uh, an industry. And this is something which I've learned from my father as well. You know, he started off uh, just selling paper to newspapers to then becoming a printer himself and then expanding in, you know, DTP work and things like that. So he's always been one of those that if there's anything in the industry, which moves with the industry, you try and be good and enjoy each of it. So I, do, I wouldn't say I have a preference. I like both of it because I love being in the studio and producing a remix because in my mind, I'm only thinking, man, if I the drop is like this, just I can picture the crowd going crazy on it. Like, you know, I'm just, that's, that's my imagination, which is amazing because then it keeps my mind active and it keeps my mind at work. And I love performing because when you are there, and you drop a particular song which you've produced or you made and the drop comes or the main hook line comes and people listen to it and they just react to it in a crazy way. You just feel like, whoa, man, this is it. So I think the energy of and the spontaneity that you get when you're performing live is a fun of its own. And being in the studio and picturing that also and producing, you know, is, is a different part, part of its own. So I think each one has its own goods and bads. But uh, yeah, one thing is there that I would never, ever in my life be able to stop performing live, I think. So if that was given, like somebody came and told me and put a gun to my head that you have to stop producing music and you have to, or you have to, yeah, or you have to stop playing live, what would you choose? I'd say I'd stop producing music and I'd play live. Because I think that energy and that fun that, you know, you as an artist go give out to the people and the people give back to you, that love and that energy is just brilliant. And I think I can't live without it. Since you love performing, can you name three places, your favorite places, which you remember to okay. perform? Okay. So, uh, are they, do they have to be nightclubs or do they have to be, they can be venues where I've performed also before? I mean, yeah. which, which do you, only nightclubs? No, no, it so, can be nightclubs, anything. it can be events, anything. it can be venues anything, only. it can be the moon, anything, okay. anywhere. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I wish that happens one day. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, so I think three uh, places which I can never ever forget in my life is one New Year's Eve that I did in Dubai at the Dubai World Trade Center, where Akil and me performed together for the New Year's Eve. It was called this, uh, the Speed New Year's Eve event by Speed Entertainment. And uh, we had 17,000 people in the World Trade Center dancing to our music. I think that is one venue which I can never forget. And the way the venue was set up, the lights, the sound, the sheer magnitude of the you know, the production was just so good. The second place I can never ever forget in my life where I performed is uh, the Commonwealth Games closing ceremony. I was performing on stage live in front of 65,000 people in Delhi in the Commonwealth Arena. With uh, On the stage with me was Raghav Sachar, uh, Shankar Mahadevanji, Sunidhi Chauhan and Shiva Maniji. So we all were together doing a six and a half minute set. I think that is something I can never ever forget and no matter what happens I would I think even if I get Alzheimer's or if I get any dementia <laughs> that memory will always remember you know be in my mind and the third and one of my favorites is uh, playing at Club Privé it's undoubtedly one of my favorite clubs in Delhi and in India 
uh, it's at the Shangri-La Hotel, and I think over there, it's like when I step in every time, there's just some magic, and I just feel it. Less crowd, more crowd is secondary, but it's one venue I cannot forget, and I I think I will keep going back again and again there to play till they keep calling me. Okay. Wow. And now I have a question from one of our regular viewers. Okay. And this was a lady, and I think she's been watching you quite closely. Okay. So she wants me to ask you. Uh-huh. Then, uh, whenever you talk to Suketu, please ask him about his fashion sense, because he looks more like an executive <laughs> or a lawyer, because he uh, dresses up in all those executive clothes and ties and everything, especially in in the male photos. So, uh, did he did he want to be an executive? Is that was a secret desire, and he's yeah. he's fulfilling it in the DJ console? Yeah, maybe it's something to do with me doing my MBA from SPJ and Institute of Management and Research. So my father's thing was that if all of us brothers, we are three brothers, we can do whatever we want in our life, but we all have to finish our education till the end, doing our MBA. So I think maybe. going to a business school and you know being around people who are with business and maybe my family background also being from business my uncles aunties relatives father grandfather everybody uh, maybe you know being in that environment i got used to maybe having a certain sense of dressing but no it was nothing to do with me becoming a business man because i never wanted to and i i'm glad i didn't <laughs> that i became a dj i'm so happy but yeah i, I hope that answers the question and she actually says that you know that uh, yeah it's all uh, it's it's just basically i think a uh, family bringing down and the environment i've been in and nothing else yeah one serious question mm-hmm. uh something that is affecting the dj industry uh what what are your views on copyright you know copyright is something which troubles a lot of dj's especially since you come uh, you started as a party dj you would relate to to you know uh, the wedding circuit and the party dj's who are being harassed sometimes because they don't have a copyright license or something like sure. that so what what are your views on on the copyright do you think that dj's and companies that the industry should come together and formulate something like and for that i am absolutely on and i'm absolutely for copyrights because ultimately it's a creation that somebody has put their heart and soul into and it is that creation which is making you earn money we are playing recorded music so i'm not saying this right now because i've been releasing a lot of my original tracks right now and i know i even know more today than ever before that how much copyright makes a difference but i think that creativity needs its uh, you know its uh, payback as if you call it and i'm absolutely on for copyrights and i'm very much on for the fact that yes there should be a proper way of actually handling this situation it would be even better if it's a government agency and not just a agency which has just come up you know from snow nowhere and there has to be a system to collect it because i know that today for me it might be easy to pay an x amount of money uh because of my shows and work and everything and to get the license for one year or two years or three years or whatever they're giving it but for another dj it might be a very high amount to acquire that license so i feel that there has to be some sort of a system okay that where each one should be charged according to a particular level of income that they are having and you know but but i think yes that everybody needs to give back to the people who composed that song produced that song written lyrics for that song and the music companies who have released that song because it's it's only fair that you know the due uh, respect should be given in term in monetary value if it may be but yes i'm very much in for the copy law copy law rights and uh, copyright law sorry and i'm very much in for uh, a system to be formulated where this could run a little bit more smoothly unlike the way it's being handled right now cool and and what is the future for dj situation do you do you have any any things which you want to do you haven't done them already like i know you've done big mixes you've done clubs uh, you've done live streams you know right. you can tell me a bit about uh, the by, uh, by the bay uh, streams that you do you know can you tell us so, a little about that so i think uh, so the by the bay sessions were actually literally just a lockdown thing it was me missing spinning music uh me missing spinning music forget about for people or no it's just me spinning music and 
you know it was a good and i i just tried it out one day so I, since the lockdown happened in 2020 i was always playing music i got my console before the lockdown was announced now i straight got my console and put it at my house from my studio so i was anyways playing music and i just thought one day that why don't i see what people think about my playing music at home and chilling and that's how by the bay came up and now it's become like you know people actually wait for sunday evening sessions for by the bay and i'm really happy that it's worked so well and it's become sort of a brand but for the future uh, so i think that you know i've not been somebody who plans too much for the future in terms of what i want to do i normally like to go with the flow like i never plan to do online events but lockdown ho gaya covid ho gaya lockdown shows chalu ho gaye online shows chalu ho gaye and i adapted to it and i did it when in the lockdown so i've been wanting to do original music since a while lekin mujhe aisa chance nahi mila because i was either traveling or i had some remix to do or something was happening so i was always tied up and originals were something totally new to me but i used that time in the lockdown to do originals or now i started releasing my original music on my youtube channel one after the other like every month practically i'm releasing one original track either electronic or hindi or punjabi so i don't say that i've planned anything as such in the future ki mujhe ha ye karna hai but i keep setting small small goals for myself and moving ahead to do things so right now my main goal is that i want to make enough original music that my youtube channel has enough original content that people can go over there and say आज कुछ नहीं करना है चौबीस घंटे का कंटेंट नॉनस्टॉप है सुकेतु के यूट्यूब चैनल में और ओरिजिनल कंटेंट है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक भी है पंजाबी भी है हिंदी भी है एवरीथिंग इज लेट्स एंड वॉच दैट सो या सो आई लाइक टू यू नो सेट गोल्स लाइक दीज स्लोली एंड स्टडीली बट वन थिंग विच आई हैव डेफिनेटली पुट इन माई माइंड एंड आई फील लाइक आई होप आई कैन डू इट समे इज आई वो ओपन म्यूजिक लेबल फॉर माई सेल्फ एंड ओनली एंड ओनली साइन अप डीजे फॉर इट नो बडी एस only oh, dj's because i feel that there are so many dj's who are so talented musically and they are not getting an outlet because you know uh, bigger music companies or bigger labels are not giving them enough uh, opportunity to other than i mean i have been talking about myself that when i want to do an original track and i asked you know bigger music companies is it to your dj are to remix banana mai tere ko panch gaane deta hu uske remix bana full on killer hum log promote karenge so i think you know people have not really taken a dj as seriously as an original artist so i think that is something which i would like to do and that is one goal which i have and which i hope i can you know accomplish that once i have my infrastructure in line i have my contacts in line have a music yeah. label which only signs on dj's to do original music and release it for them and show them the right way that they aise karna chahiye aur aise hona chahiye so that's one thing which i'm looking forward to wow fantastic fantastic okay mm. at the end uh you know a lot of uh, dj's are inspired by you yeah. a lot of uh, upcoming dj's a lot of dj's like me we are all inspired by you uh, any message you have for people like me so the first message i like to give everybody is that you need to be like jazzy joe sir you have to be as humble as him because he said he's inspired by me he doesn't have any idea also maybe i don't say it enough and there are very few dj's who i actually call sir because i look up to them that way not because of anything else but because of the achievements that they've had and i've seen their career in the past and from where to where they have gone and it's sunny sarit sir Jazzy Joe sir, you Akbar Sami sir, Hussein sir, Ivan sir. I mean, like these, you all are the people who I still call sir. So that's the first thing which I want to say that, you know, be modest. If no matter how much you've achieved, no matter how further you've gone and how much you've gone, always be modest like these people because they are just incredibly, amazingly modest. And that's one thing which I've picked up definitely, other than music and DJing from you guys. So, yep. So that's one thing I like to, to tell all the aspiring DJs and people that's, that's you know who are inspired by me. <laughs> Always a pleasure. So it's uh, you know one thing is that, and I would I would just like to tell a lot of DJs who you know even who are inspired by DJing or who are aspiring DJs and who want to get into the profession that don't get into it for the wrong reasons because most of the times I have an institute in Mumbai where people say, "Arey, me DJ DJing seek lunga na." तो पैसा आना शुरू हो जाएगा लड़की अब मिल जाएगी नाइट क्लब जाने को मिलेगा पार्टी करने को मिलेगा और मैं सुकेतु सर के जैसा बन जाऊंगा या अकबर सर के जैसा बनाऊंगा या अखिल सर के जैसा बनाऊंगा दैट इज द रॉन्ग रीजन टू इवन गेट इनटू द इंडस्ट्री द ओनली रीजन यू शुड गेट इनटू द इंडस्ट्री इज फॉर द लव ऑफ म्यूजिक एंड मिक्सिंग म्यूजिक इफ यू हैव दैट फोकस राइट द रेस्ट विल फॉलो एंड आई नो दैट आई बिलीव इन दैट सो these are the only two things i like to you know tell aspiring djs and djs who are inspired by me that just be true to the music and trust me the rest will follow what wonderful words what wonderful <laughs> words to end it with amazing amazing no wonder 
you you are such a great mix master suketu thank you so much for your time i know you're a busy guy thank you so much no. and take care thank Wishing you, you all the best Please brother be safe thank you sir and now we come to the end of this episode featuring indian mix master suketu radia and his insights into his life and love for music do tune into our next episode which will once again feature another mix master who has been rocking india i hope all of you enjoyed this episode and if you did please subscribe to this channel and like and share this video so that others can appreciate these great mix masters too you can also send any questions suggestions or feedback to this email jazzyvinyl at yahoo.com for all music lovers and dj's watching enjoy and get inspired till next time have fun and join the mix masters who will rock you for ever more here we go check it out check it out check it out